Hi, I'm Somraj and welcome to Weekly Economic Insights, where we discuss the latest news and updates that affect your personal finances. In today's segment, we'll begin with an expert's view on the IRDI's concern over insurance mis-selling. The insurance authority IRDI says that life insurance mis-selling has reached an alarming level. IRDI report shows that out of 1,24,293 complaints for life insurers, 20% were about unfair business practices. For non-life insurers, 66% of 78,347 complaints were about claims. Let's hear what our expert Nisha Sangvi, director and co-founder at Promo Fintech has to say. Hello, thank you for having me on your show. The key factors which contribute to mis-selling uh, mainly, they are incentive-driven sales by agents focusing only on high commissions. The, uh, that majorly uh, affects the end consumer because he does not receive the right product for consumption. Lack of financial literacy. This is something which is very integral because financial literacy is close to zero in our country where end consumer does not receive the right product. Right? It's important that when you're buying an insurance product, you, the literacy has to be uh, given or taken by the end consumer uh, aggressive and pressure tactics uh, sales tactics these are some points where uh, if an agent is calling and advising your product it means you're buying the agent's need and not your need right so at time of choosing product don't uh, uh, get fallen trap of an agent who's trying to just sell you a product if he's trying to understand your need that is how you'll be able to avoid a mis-selling Right? Um, I understand that complexity of insurance products is always there, uh, especially with those of investment products. So it's important that one does not fall into uh, uh, basics of, don't forget the basics of it, so that you're able to uh, absolutely relate to the product and take it uh, as per your financial plan and in your journey. Uh, also, it's important that you don't become a victim. Right? How does it? How can you not be a victim? It's basically educate yourself about the policy terms and conditions. This uh, every product of insurance will have policy wordings. Uh, these are those terms and conditions which will affect you at the time of claim, be it death claim or be it health insurance claim or any claim. Right? Uh, it's also important that you verify the agent's credentials on the IRDA website. Uh, the Bima Bharosa portal gives a lot of information uh, uh, about the complaints that one can make on uh, if you are a missold a product. Seek advice from an fin independent financial advisor. It's important that it, uh, insurances cannot be DIY. You need a professional help, ask for it and take it. Uh, it's also important that you don't make an impulsive decision and you also need to make sure that there is a review, regular review done on the policy that you already hold or you plan to buy. Now, when we speak about mis-selling or not to become a victim, uh, how will it affect your personal finance, right? It definitely impacts your personal finance. Uh, when you look at mis-selling, uh, it can also negatively impact. Uh, if you had a right product, then it's perfect. But when you look at uh, on the negative side of it, yes, if you bought a wrong product in your portfolio, where premium outflow should have been only 10,000, but you're paying a lakh rupees and getting a lesser cover. So that is something which you can definitely avoid and this is how you should evaluate a product while buying it in your portfolio so that you have adequate cover and you're not wasting money on unsuitable products which will uh, you know affect your financial journey somewhere ahead right so it's important to make an informed and cautious decision while buying a financial product like insurance thank you for sharing your thoughts let us move on to the irdi's new guidelines to protect policyholders the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India has introduced new guidelines to safeguard policyholders' interest. Insurers must now have board-approved policy for policyholders' protection, covering aspects like preventing mis-selling, ensuring inclusivity for persons with disabilities, and enhancing service efficiencies. Insurers must provide updated product lists on their website, along with detailed prospectus. A 30-day free look period and new individual health policies are now mandatory for life. The IRDI also emphasizes quick proposal processing with the decision to be communicated within seven days. The new rules prohibit charging additional fees for basic policyholder services. These measures 
aims to increase transparency, reduce mis-selling and improve overall customer experience in the insurance sector, potentially leading to greater consumer trust and market growth. Now let's talk about the latest news for EPS subscribers. From January 1st, 2025, people getting pension from the Employer's Pension Scheme or EPS can withdraw their money from any bank in India. Labor Minister Mansukh Mandviya approved this new system which will benefit 7.8 million subscribers. This system will use advanced IT and banking technologies to offer a smoother experience for pensioners. It will also allow pensioners to move locations without transferring their pension payment orders. This growth forecast and pension system improvement could boost investor confidence in India's economy and increase interest in pension-related investment. Moving on to the changes in tax deduction on rent payments. Starting October 1st, 2024, there will be a change in the tax deducted at source or TDS on house rent payments. The TDS rate will drop from 5% to 2% for monthly rent payment over Rs 50,000. Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman announced this change in the 2024 union budget. The new rule applies to individual and Hindu undivided families paying rent to a resident. Tenants paying rent above Rs 50,000 per month must deduct TDS. They should deduct this tax when they pay the rent or credit it to the landlord's account, whichever happens first. They need to file Form 26QC within 30 days and issue Form 16C to the landlord within 15 days of filing Form 26QC. This reduction in TDS rate could make rental investment more attractive, potentially increasing returns for property investors. Now let's discuss potential tax notices for high-value foreign payments. The tax department is closely examining foreign payments exceeding Rs 6 lakh. If you have sent more than Rs 6 lakh abroad for reasons like funding a child's education, supporting family member or making international investments, you might receive a tax notice by December 31st, 2024. The Central Board of Direct Taxes or CBDT checks high-value outward foreign payments to find any mismatches with reported income in tax returns. They are using Form 15CC data, which bank submits quarterly to analyze these transactions. The department can issue various types of notices, including under Section 133, 131 subsection 1A, 142 subsection 1, 143 subsection 2, or 148. They can look at data as far back as 2016. If discrepancies are found, taxpayers may face additional tax demands, interest, penalties, and even prosecution. It shows the importance of accurate reporting and documentation for foreign transactions, encouraging more transparent and compliant international investments. Let's move on to a study about IPO share sales. A recent SEBI study reveals that 54% of IPO shares allotted to investors, excluding anchor investors, are sold within a week of listing. The study, covering 144 IPOs from April 2021 to December 2023, found that individual investors sold 50% of their allotted shares by value within a week and 70% within a year. Investors were more likely to sell shares that showed positive listing gains. When IPO returns exceeded 20%, 67.6% of shares were sold within a week, compared to only 23.3% when returns were negative. The study also noted a surge in new DMAT accounts opening during 2021 to 2023, with nearly half of the account applying for these IPOs being newly opened. This information can help investors better understand IPO market dynamics and potentially adjust their investment strategies for short-term and long-term gains. Now let's discuss India's Forex Reserve. India's foreign exchange or forex reserve have reached a new record high of USD 681.69 billion for the week ending on August 23. This represents a significant jump of USD 7.023 billion from the previous week. The earlier all-time high was USD 674.919 billion recorded on August 2. This increase in forex reserve is a positive sign for India's economy. A strong forex reserve can help stabilize the rupee, which can benefit inflation and consumer purchasing power. It also cushions against external economic shocks and can improve investors' confidence in the country's financial stability. Higher forex reserve can lead to a more stable currency and economy, potentially attracting more foreign investments and providing a safer environment for domestic investors. Lastly, let's look at a new investment option. SEBI Chairperson Madhvi Puri Butch has announced that India might soon see the introduction of Rs 
250 per month SIP or systematic investment plan. This move aims to make financial inclusion accessible to a broader population segment. Butch explained that the idea is about offering a low-cost investment option and using technology to make onboarding and servicing more efficient. Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund is reputedly leading in developing this rupees 250 SIP, which would be the first of its kind by any mutual fund house in India. This initiative could encourage more people to start investing regularly, even with smaller amounts, potentially leading to greater financial literacy and wealth accumulation over time. That's a wrap for this week's economic insight. We have explored major shifts across various sectors, reminding us just how dynamic the financial landscape can be. Stay informed to navigate these changes and make informed decision about your financial future.